down on the bill. It's a private note owned by the US Federal Reserve, United States Federal Reserve. And the United States is probably not the United States of America. It is a Rothschild owned bank. It owns subsidiary banks all around the world, as well as the Australian Federal Reserve. And their retail outlets, such as Commonwealth of Australia Bank, Westpac, and those types of banks. So they are all owned by this one mother bank. And this mother bank acts as a trustee for the Vatican. The word Jew means banker. In the early modern period, a court Jew or a court factor was a Jewish banker who handled the finances of or lent money to European, mainly German, royalty and nobility. In return for their services, court Jews gained social privileges, including, in some cases, being granted noble status. So, if this is the case, then the Jews we are talking about is the Vatican, the Vatican Jew. Now, the strange thing about this note is people say on, on this note is written, in God we trust, is written on here somewhere. And I have asked many, many people, where does it say, where is it written in English, in God we trust? And they say, it says it right there. I says, oh, okay, I can't see it because that's not written in English. <laughs> I go, yes, it is. It's written in English right there. No, it's not. It's not written in English and it's not written in American Sign Language and it's not written in Latin. Because when you're using American Sign Language, which is the all uppercase text like this, it follows the grammatical rules of Latin. It does not follow the grammatical rules of English. And then when you're writing in proper upper and lowercase text, because two or more all uppercase le uh, letters or hieroglyphic letters does not appear in any form of the English language. It's no, it's no part of English. But this note contains no English whatsoever. Anywhere. But it also contains no Latin. It contains a thing called debased Latin. The language on this is debased. Or it's also called dog Latin in the Black's Law Dictionary. But dog Latin in the normal dictionary is debased Latin, which is Latin constructed under the grammatical rules of English, which is a no, no, it can't be done, <laughs> but they do it. And what they've done with this is they've created a complete and utter fiction, a fictitious note, a form of a counterfeit, something that's not real. But if you believe it's real, then it's real. It's just like the notes on Monopoly money on the, on the, the board, the, uh, the, the game board, Monopoly. Those notes in that game are the notes that relate within the rules of that game. And this is the same. This is a game that they play. This is the US Federal Reserve game. They created this whole thing. I think it's the Rothschild banking thing, probably to do with the Vatican. They've created a complete internal system that is completely and utterly fictitious, debauched, deranged, criminal. Every word, every foul word you could think of is related to the word debased. So is the God that they worship on this in God we trust if this is an illusion and if Lucifer 
is the illusion god the god of the illusions then is lucifer or baphomet or baal satan is that the god that they are talking about in this note and if you are a part of any of its subdivisions such as the commonwealth of australia bank or the commonwealth of australia company uh, state of queensland company state of victoria state of new south wales state of western australia <laughs> if you are a part of any of those states that are not really states at all they are simply subdivision companies of the u.s federal reserve that worships Baal or baphomet or satan and you've got to remember that Satan is Saturn and comes from the god Saturn, the old Greek or Roman god Saturn. Saturn is now Rome. <laughs> and in 1973, Whitlam signed the Unidroit Treaty of Rome, the Unidroit Tre Treaty of Saturn, the, the Unidroit Treaty of Satan. <laughs> And it's telling you everything here on this note. But because we've been so indoctrinated and we start to read all the writing that's on this note, this sign language, these hieroglyphs, these Egyptian hieroglyphs, we're reading them as English and we're reading them as if the type on this is English. We're using the grammatical rules of English in order to try and make sense of this note. This is where the term presumption of law comes from. Because the government is a complete fiction, it derives from no fact, no grammatical fact. Nothing makes sense grammatically. Hence the term presumption of law, because there is no fact of law appearing. But it really sensibly does not make sense at all. Sensibly it doesn't make sense because it's a complete it's a scam it's a it's a trick it's a trap to trap you into a society other than the real society where you are linked to your birthright and the mineral and energy wealth of your lands are there and because you've been removed from that society and placed into this society then they have gone in behind your back and taken your real dominion, which is the real authority to your lands, the real lands that you were born on, not these fictitious countries or these fictitious states. And through the grammatical inability that you've got, you haven't been able to see that this is what it is this is not real money this is a fictitious note and it's telling you on the note and on these sonic satan worshippers that created this stuff it's sort of telling you that it's fake <laughs>
Lucifer, what is your problem? Just that, sir. Okay. I'm a Christian, sir. I'm pure and virtuous and wholesome and innocent. How can you say anything to buy it about me? Sir, you need to be born again. Is I it, am born again. Is that, now, did you just say that you are Lucifer? I am Lucifer. Okay, define Lucifer for me. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Luc mm -hmm. Say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the Internet. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach, is that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. No. And you're, hey, what you're about confirming those hospitals? It. You know, they, they you know what, sir? <clears throat> Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not we did not do these good deeds in your name. And you'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus said it? In Matthew chapter 5. Mercy. No. That's hard to believe. So you're that a Christian and you don't know that. Actually. No, I really am. You are. Because that, I'm pure and virtuous. You're pure and virtuous. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're perfect without Jesus, right? No, no, no. No. Okay. Tell me about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Oh. Well, he's... He
order, brethren, to receive the most worshipful, the Grand Master. <laughs> as equals and we have an opportunity to create a nation in the very essence of Masonic morality. It would be wonderfully symbolic, don't you think? You'll be wanting to put the all-seeing eye on our banknotes next. Uh, uh, you, uh, you think I'm taking it a bit far? Please don't ask me questions like that, Brother Franklin. You know I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> Oh, come on, Brother Washington. Everybody lies occasionally, surely. Especially politicians. Not me. Not even so much as an alternative fact. Oh, but we must all be aware of fake news. <laughs> the people must be free to think what they like as well. We can have no thought police in our new society. The foundation stone of our new nation built on all those principles that we hold dear. The plans for our new capital city already have a very Masonic feel to them, yeah. Candidate for initiation into the order, I'm giving them a little introduction into some of our mysteries. These two gentlemen are founding an entire nation built on our principles. There we have great promises for our new nation. You know, I wonder if other presidents after me will also be Freemasons. Many will be. And Freemasonry will become embedded in the American culture. And the eye will appear on the banknotes. Oh, God. These principles will be honored with a gift from your French brethren. A gift that will be a welcoming beacon to the poor and oppressed. This is the statue we are giving you. It's a bit small, isn't it? Oh, this is a maquette. The real thing is bigger. Much, much bigger. America will produce a great many great Americans from many different walks of life and many different fields, and many will be Masons. Sportsmen, actors, writers, soldiers, filmmakers, businessmen, inventors, Astronauts! Uh, what on earth is an astronaut? <laughs> no, they're not. I don't follow. Well, they're not on Earth, they're in space. In fact, Brother Buzz Aldrin was the second man to walk upon the surface of the moon. Uh, that's the best thing I've heard this evening. What, that a mason walked on the moon? Man on the moon. Amazing. But don't forget the musicians. Do not forget the musicians. <laughs> Authoritarian and totalitarian regimes continue to suppress Freemasonry, afraid of its strong heritage of liberty and equality. It symbolizes the inevitability of your end. The British Army had traveling lodges that moved with regiments. Freemasons have served their countries and communities with distinction. Freemasons met across the Union and Confederate divide to celebrate their common rituals. And today, Freemasonry remains an active part of military life in many countries. Freemasonry has burned as a blazing fire through the last three centuries, the driving force behind the Royal Society, 
was initiated into Freemasonry. Prince Edward, Duke of Kent, father of Queen Victoria, and Prince Augustus, Duke of Sussex. The two princes brought their feuding Grand Lodges together and reconciled to be the United Grand Lodge of England. Kings George IV, William IV, Edward VII, Edward VIII, and George VI were all Freemasons, as were 18 dukes and princes, including the Duke of Edinburgh. This year, His Royal Highness Prince Edward, the Duke of Kent, celebrates his 50th year as Grand Master of the United Grand Lodge of England. His Royal Highness was proposed into Freemasonry by the then Grand Master, the Earl of Scarborough. He was initiated into Royal Alpha Lodge No. 16, an advocate for the craft all over the world, continuing three centuries of distinguished royal tradition at the very heart of English Freemasonry. To order brethren to receive the most worshipful, the Grand Master. As permanent master of these three lodges, I now call on my deputy masters. Most worshipful Grand Master. Most worshipful Grand Master. Most worshipful Grand Master. Most worshipful Grand Master. I humbly ask you to complete the initiation of this worthy candidate for Freemasonry. Dawn our ceremonies and forever remind us of our incomparable heritage, the birth of organized Freemasonry, stressing the deep and sincere loyalty and affection felt by the Brethren of the United Grand Lodge of England for their Grand Master. I had the pleasure of meeting 136 Grand Masters visiting from overseas at Freemasons Hall yesterday. Today, though, we are a meeting of more than 4,000 gathered from all around the world, from our own constitution and beyond. When the global Masonic family comes together to celebrate our past, and renew our own pride and confidence in and enthusiasm for Freemasonry. I hereby read the text of a letter sent today to Buckingham Palace. May it please your majesty. We, the representatives of over 200,000 Freemasons under the United Grand Lodge of England, most respectfully express our continuing loyalty to your majesty's throne and person in this the 66th year of your long and distinguished reign of His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent as our much loved and greatly respected Grand Master. We humbly thank God for preserving our order and fervently pray his blessings on your Majesty so that our loyal devotion to your Majesty may long continue. Given at the Royal Albert Hall this 31st day of October, Anno Domini 2017. Her Majesty has been pleased to reply in the following terms. The Queen has asked me to thank you for your kind letter of loyal greetings on behalf of the representatives of the Freemasons under the United Grand Lodge of England, which are being celebrated on the 31st of October at the Royal Albert Hall. Her Majesty appreciated your thoughtfulness in writing as you did. We leave the Royal Albert Hall even more proud of our ancient institution. Worldwide, Freemasonry remains as important and relevant as ever. A global society of perhaps six million people. As the globe embraced Freemasonry, enlightenment came. I may not agree with what you say, but I shall defend to the death your right to say it. None is more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. The Masonic CHIP program uses modern police-approved techniques to create a child identification kit. And we take fingerprints. We also provide them with a swab for uh, um, getting a DNA swab. And we also provide them with uh, 
imprint where they can get an imprint of the child's teeth. So not only does it provide DNA as well as a swab, but it is also a source if you were using tracking dogs to, to provide a scent for the, for the child. You may be surprised to see who we found using tricks to cover up their license plates. Apparently, they're law enforcement. You know, in, in Hollywood and in the industry and the stuff we do, there's a lot of like insider secrets to keeping your career going and a lot of insider secrets to, 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 to making things tick. Oh.